praise God. Who knows you are yet to be announced to the next level. You never know. Because when God wants to change your story, he sends you into a place where he has prepared his word. He sent his word and delivered them from their distraction. God will not send you to a mall to change your life. God will not send you to a party to change your life. Or maybe if it's a wedding where the, the word is being preached. So God makes sure because the word of God, nothing can happen without the word being released. Amen. He said, I send my word. My word that comes out of my mouth does not return unto me void. They accomplish that which I say. So this means that any time God wants to turn your life around, he give a rema word. And now word. Not the word of last year. Not the word of yesterday. And now word that will transport you to the next level. Amen. And now you are here. Thank God you made it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. in advance. Yeah. Thank God you made it. Praise God. You know, right now here where we are, the atmosphere is atmosphere of worship, is atmosphere. I mean, there, there is no doubt. You don't have to be shaking to know God is here. No, 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 no. He is here. And the angels are here. The only thing that you need to do is to pay rapt attention. Focus. Don't move your eyes around. Don't be distracted by anything. Even if you see somebody going up and down. Pay attention. Rapt attention. Because any time the word can drop in your spirit. I can be saying something and the angels whispering something to you. Because we are in the presence of God. You have, maybe you have prayed for something for too long. And I'm saying things that are not even involving your prayer. But the angels come with answer and tell you. The only thing when, when God speaks, it must be received. If the reception on your side is failing, you will not hear the broadcast. Heaven is always broadcasting. God is forever speaking. It's people who do not hear. No one has ever heard the word of God, the voice of God, or what God is saying now and be stagnant. Stagnation, frustration is the result of not catching what heaven is saying. A man that hears from heaven go anywhere in the world. You cannot hear from heaven and miss, be directed, miss, miss your direction. Life is all about direction. They are all going, but they are not going the right direction. <laughs> we can all be going, oh, but not the same direction or not the right direction. When God speaks, there's direction. When God speaks, there's vision. Without vision, people perish. Vision is when God speaks. Praise the Lord. So tonight you are here. May you hear the word of God. May you hear God speaking to you tonight. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. You know, I was thinking as I was praying. Pastor Fumulani and his wife. I was thinking about something. I know pastors that are here will attest to that. That ministry is mystery. Ministry. <laughs> Church is mystery. That only need the builder. Without Jesus, we can't do nothing. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Where you have planted and watered, I, God, will cause it to grow. And I said, where are you taking me, God? 
This is not a ministry, but I just want to share what God has laid in my heart before I go to the message. He said, anything that has ministry, has mystery, that needs the owner to direct it. He said, do you know marriage is ministry? I say, yes, sir. Marriage is ministry. Okay. He said, the first time when your husband saw you, he was having goosebumps. He loved you. And now you are 14 years in marriage. Do you know that he doesn't see your, your beauty anymore? But he fell in love with your soul. After a long time of marriage, beauty can start marriage. But what keeps marriage is the beauty of a soul. Your character is the one that sustains what has started. So honeymoon period has finished in marriage. What will keep this marriage going is the characters and attitude towards each other. That's ministry. When we all start, we are excited. But in the middle of the journey, the honeymoon season finish. What will keep you going with city church will not be the goosebumps. It will be your character. It will be the beauty of your soul. Some came, they went. You're still here. Remain. Because what is about to unfold? Yeah. <laughs> I say, what is about to unfold in this place will make those that have left wish they can come back. This, this work is no small law. This work is big. This work is massive. So what sustain ministry? What sustain marriages? What sustain relationships? Is the beauty of your soul. Your charisma does not sustain ministry. Gifts can start, but gifts don't sustain. I can preach a powerful message to everyone, but they will only catch my inspiration. It's not the powerful message that sustains the ministry. It's the character. We human beings are intelligent beings. Before we are body, we are spirits. So when I am standing here, no matter what I am saying, people that I'm standing talking to, they don't hear what I'm saying. They hear the inspiration behind what I'm saying. If what I'm saying comes from the place of love, there I have built. Are you hearing me? If what I'm saying comes from the place of love and the place of sacrifice and the place of fellowship with the Holy Spirit, there I have not missed my communication. Praise God. Then you find that people want to hear you more and more. You are not this gifted pastor who has charisma. But yet people want to hear you more and more. What is it? The inspiration behind what you are saying. When people hear you, will they live with the, with the wrap off of the love of God? Or they live with your hatred? That's not my message, but this is what the Spirit of God told me to say here today. That these things of the Spirit, we cannot joke around with them. These things of the Spirit, we cannot be hypocrisy about it. When we speak, especially those of us who are pastors or leaders in churches, when all leaders of God, you know, leading the people, the flock of God, when we speak, 
People pick the condition of our hearts. More than what you are saying. If you are speaking from confusion, you communicate confusion. If you are speaking from love, you communicate love. There I have built. When we go before Christ, we must present a body. We must present people that we have built for him. Make me disciples of all nations. So when we go before him, we will be presenting the work that we have been doing. Even if you have five, but you are building on the right foundation and you are giving them from the right inspiration and you present the five to Jesus. He said, you good and faithful steward. Well done. It's not the crowd, it's the quality of it. Then the quality will produce the quantity of it. Remember, one day we will stand before Christ. All of us here. And we will be having to present what we did for him. What is the use of having all these things and all that you have done for God is burned by fire. What pain will it be? These things of God is not eye service. Oh. Do everything as unto the Lord. Don't do things for God to be seen. Do for things for God. For God to see you. We can go and say, yo, 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 she was singing very powerfully. But did God hear your voice? Mama spoke about voice here. You can sing very powerfully in the choir where people are crying. But you know, heaven cannot hear your voice. It's only people that are crying. And you think today I sang and I sang. But God is saying, I didn't hear you. It's better when I sing out of tune, but God is hearing me. Amen. At the end of the day, the one who matters the most is God, not men. Men can say, well done. If God is not saying, well done, it's not done. Are you hearing me, somebody? Pastor can come here and say, you people are doing very well, but are we doing very well before God or before men? So be careful, huh? How are you going to minister and serve God? Minister God from your heart. Don't minister to, for people to blot you. Give Jesus, give Jesus. You say give Jesus a round of applause, but you know you are receiving your... You love when you see people plodding you. Don't be plodded by men. Be plodded by God and his angels. Your relevancy is not before men. Your relevancy is before God. When God stand, when Jesus on the throne stand and say, Sharon, well done. You good and faithful steward. And the angels of God, you celebrated in heaven. Than being celebrated on earth. I'm done. Don't be a celebrity here. Because for here we'll finish here. Rather let be yourself be a relevant before God. Be a celebrity before the angels of God. Seek to please him. Amen. Yeah, seek to please God. When I was young in the things of the spirit... When I preached and people didn't jump, jump, I thought I, today I didn't do very well. <laughs> it was not that. <laughs> it looked like this place is, is hot, Mama. I under, and, and now I understand you. Because I was thinking, why is she taking out the jacket? <laughs> no, I, I understand the heat. I think the anointing is too much. Thank you so much, Pastor. 
it's too much. It's just too much. So, uh, uh, I will do these things, you know. <laughs> and I see Pastor Pumran, yes, 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 prophet, yes, yes, prophet. When I go, ah, today, no, 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 you run, I'm One day, the Spirit of God called me to altar. And I began to pray. And he said to me, I want to work on you. I want to give me time. Because there are a lot of things that I need to break in you. Then when I finish breaking you, I will display you. And he said, first thing. Don't preach to their emotions. Preach to their spirits. And he said to me, lower your voice. You know the way Pastor Pumulani will just come and talk here. Yeah, you will see me now going up and down, but the main thing is I want you to go with the message. When people applaud you, don't celebrate. You are in trouble. Jesus, people applauded him. He never took any applaud for men. Because he knew the heart of men. If you want to miss God, receive applaud. Did it today. I did it. All of them were rolling on the floor. <laughs> they were rolling for you. Uh -uh. They were rolling because of your charisma. They were not rolling because they are seeing the angels. They are seeing you. You are the one who made them to go on the floor. So things that really matters to God do not matter to men. Let us seek. Now we're looking at the time that we're in. The time is so short that let us be delivered from what will people say. And come to a place of what will God say? Praise God. If God says something about what you did, praise God. That's what we need to seek after so that we are accepted before the Lord. That's our hearts cry. As we can see, the day is coming. The rapture of the church is around the corner. Are you rapture reborn? We will leave you here. People still applauding you. Go to First Kings 18. But when I told you that I'm in the house of the sun, so I will just be talking. Other places I don't do like this. First Kings 18, 41. Divine acceleration. Mama, uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor Beauty, I love the fact that you said this acceleration is not money. This acceleration is not this. Your spiritual growth. I just love that point. I said, no, I think she's speaking my language. Because when you grow spiritually, everything else comes into place. The main thing is development. Spiritual development. You don't have to pray for money. You don't have to pray for, for cars and houses. All you have to do is to grow spiritually. As you grow, these things will follow you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall follow you. Hallelujah. First Kings 18.41 Are we projecting the scriptures? We are growing, isn't it? We're growing spiritually, isn't it? Mm. First Kings 18 Okay, let me start. Yes, from verse 41. The Bible says, then Elijah said to Ahab, this is the situation where Elijah had declared the drought. And after declaring the drought, now he wants the rain to come back. Then you will just catch as we, we continue. I know many of you know this portion of the scripture. The, then Elijah said to Ahab, 
Go. Go up and eat and drink, for there is a sound. Jada Bakaliada. For there is, a, there is the sound of abundance of rain. And I hear the Spirit of God saying there's a sound of abundance in this ministry. Sound of abundance of rain. You know, you know, you know where Elijah was? He was hearing things in the Spirit. He was not seeing with physical eyes. Because Elijah was a prophet of God. Prophets operate in the spirit more than the physical. So Elijah began to hear. He said, I'm hearing. He declared. I want to show you something. He declared that I'm hearing the sound of abundance of rain. Let's go to verse 42. It was not raining. It was very dry. But there's something that Elijah knew. He knew the power of declaration. He knew the power of announcement, as Mama said. He announced drought, drought came. And now he is announcing rain. Before anything happens, it needs to be declared. Our brother came and stood here and announced to us the services and all that. We couldn't have known that there's Friday ignition service in this church if there was no announcement. Action follow announcement. Go to verse 42. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. And Elijah, Elijah, Elisha, Elijah went up. To the top of Camel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. After Elijah announced or declared the abundance of rain, he didn't go to sleep. He went on Mount Carmel so that he can pray. <laughs> After you have been prophesied to, which we believe we will talk to three or four people before we leave to speak to your destiny. When we announce you to your destiny, some of you just need announcement only. Oh, that's all. All you need is announcement that God said it is done. God said doors of opportunities are opening for you. God is saying that this you are healed. You just need that. One word from God will turn your life for, for, around forever. So, Elijah, after and now, so after receiving prophecies, it's still time to sleep. It's time to bow down and pray. What is happening here in this conference, yo? This church need to pray like never before. If they thought they prayed, God is saying that accelerated prayer. <laughs> because what is being announced will not come to pass until somebody pray. Amen. And Elijah went and bowed down on Mount Carmel and began to that the posture of prayer. So Elijah understood the power of prayer. He knew that nothing on earth will happen until a man prays. If someone prays, things will move. If we do not pray, nothing will happen. So Elijah understood that before anything, uh, yes, I've announced that I'm hearing the abundance of, pray, of, of rain, but I need to go into a place of prayer. After this conference, if you are here and you need to see change in your life, after this conference, from what you heard, you have to go to a place of prayer. You have to go to the altar. So Elijah did that and we see that before 
this rain scenario happen something happened now in first uh, in the same the same chapter verse 1 until verse 40 where elijah had to kill the prophets of baal you still remember that Something was happening there and Elijah was moving from the, 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 the encounter with prophets of Baal into encountering, dealing with the rain, the drought issue. But I want to show you what made Elijah to be in the place of dealing with prophets of Baal. Go to 1 Kings 18 verse 36 to 37. I want to show you something there. It is the same chapter. It says so verse 36 same chapter verse 36 let's go back up to verse 36 i want to show you something that all of you know and it came to pass at the time of offering of evening sacrifice that elijah the prophet came near and said lord god of abram isaac and israel don't forget that he's god of abram isaac and israel let it be known this day that you are god in israel and I am your servant. That I have done all these things at your word. Next. Hear me, O oh Lord. This is prayer. He's praying. Hear me, O oh Lord. Hear me. That these people may know that you are the Lord God. And that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Next. Verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offer sacrifice. And the wood and the stones and the dust and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Verse 39. And now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. What am I trying to show you tonight? The fire didn't just fall. Elijah had to pray. <laughs> the fire from heaven. God will not do anything until there's prayer. God will not do anything in the nation. The time for talking, talking as a nation is over. It's time to pray. We must, South Africa must pray. Not a drive through prayer. Prayer. That birth nations, birth souls. Elijah was dealing with Big things, fire from heaven, declaring drought and all that through prayer. So if you need something significant, not just, but something significant to happen in your life, you have to pray. Not our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. No, that's not prayer. Have you seen a woman going to the labor ward and, and be calling, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, in labor pain? Eh? Eh, that's how you want to pray. That God hear all the prayers. Hey. <laughs> they say the natural things explain the spiritual things. So, when God brings a woman into labor, prayer is acquainted to laboring. When God compares prayer with laboring, Pastor, I don't know if you went when your wife was giving birth. I don't know. Eh. <laughs> My husband was so bold. He said, I'm coming with you. We're going to do this thing together. We started together. I said, no, that's wonderful. I have a very supporting husband. <laughs> that thing start. He sweat. He was sweating. He said, he hold me when I was still crying. Mama, I still want to go and get cocoa. I'm coming back. He never came back again. <laughs> he came back when the job is finished. 
Because he said, ah, is this what a woman go through to birth? And then you are, you want something significant to happen in your life. And you're still praying about Father who art in heaven. Father, I was just asking that you give me a job. Hey! <laughs> you will work after rapture. I'm telling you the honest truth. Mercy God can hear any prayer. Do you know the forces that are around that are fighting your destiny? Do you think like the devil can just watch you moving from glory to glory, things just happening? No, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, powers. So this means that there will be, there will be a destiny that they are fighting. God wants you this to happen and the devil say it will not happen. May you become angry with your destiny a little bit. Some of you are supposed to birth by now. You have to go to the altar. Prayer is a place of birthing. It's not my message. I've not announced my message, but you will see. Because I cannot talk without prayer. Pastor said it. We started with prayer. So, prayer is a place of birthing. And I want to tell you something about prayer. It doesn't need laziness. Do you think like Elijah was praying this, the way I prayed? The way I said, Ah, oh God, let these people see that you are... <laughs> That was not how Elijah did it. No. There was, I will show you as we continue. There was intensity in what he said. His whole being was connected to what he said. You cannot pray being absent from your prayer. I said something very pro profound there by the Spirit. This, and this is the first time I hear it as well myself. It's recorded. You cannot pray God hear you and you are absent from prayer. You are, your mouth is praying but your heart is not there. I hear you are wearing your makeup on. You don't want to mess up your makeup. Mm -mm. You don't, there's no slay queen. In prayer, there's no slay queen. Eria son de ria basia raba. Mari basse vere miri si uro vere basi vere daria si are vere vere asare. And now it's winter. How you slept, you don't know. Your your last si rabi re 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 was all you are you are already gone. You don't even remember that you were praying, and you don't even remember what you were praying for. All the last thing you remember is you were zibri yarebesiare. And witches are not sleeping. Devil worshippers are not sleeping. <laughs> and you think you will produce anything significant on earth? It's better God take you to heaven. Maybe you will rest today. Because you are not ready. You are not ready to see anything significant in life. Uh -uh. Yeah, you, you think like those preachers in Nigeria that are filling stadiums. They pray two minutes. I call all the souls. I call all the souls. I call, come here, come here, all souls, come here. <laughs> souls are birthed. Nothing will happen on earth until it's birthed in. And they go so day. Until it's birthed in prayer. Somebody shout, I'm praying. Shout, I'm praying. Like never before. If you were praying, 
I want to I want to show you something about prayer. But Lord, why am I talking so much about prayer? It's Pastor Pumulan who did it. If you are praying for one hour, you produce one hour result. Let me tell you a mystery of one hour. I'm not saying that uh, uh, you have to pray. It's important that you pray one hour, three hours. God can hear you anytime. But it takes discipline from your side. When you're spending one hour in prayer, because of the indiscipline of the mind, the mind still needs to be brought into the altar. Your mind in one, within one hour, your mind will be lingering around. You'll be thinking, I should have paid this. I should have done this. Your mind is still, you know, all over until your mind come in and have harmony with your spirit. Now prayer has start. So when you have one hour, I want to surprise you. If you pray one hour, it means the quality of your prayer was five minutes. How oh, did I pray one hour? <laughs> you didn't pray one hour, you pray five minutes. Because the, 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 the first 95 minutes, your mind is good, 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 it's everywhere. Your mind is everywhere. When you enter hour two, then we are geared, our minds, everything is in place. Now you begin to see visions. I want when I live here, the hunger for prayer is so steady in you that pastor will not call you to pray. You will pray eventually. Yeah. Automatically, you are becoming a prayer machine. Yeah. I say automatically, this church is birthing prayer machines. Yeah. Ah, since you are born again, your tongue will be Korea, 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 uh, even a child changes in language. Since your own tongues have t t t t t t t t like the mother of this house, t t chili t t chili. Hey, move from t to z. Your tongues, the devil are so used to your tongues. Your tongues cannot even cast out devils. Because they are too used to 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 t t t t t t t t t t t t t t Go to Zagi Zogo Bregede Legede Zagadologo Dologodobo Meregede Legede Gogobo Tagalagadigarabash. you confuse the enemy. What is she saying today? Because we are used to T.E.T. <laughs> Speaking in tongues is language. You need to grow in language. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. Can't always be speaking like a child all the time and think like you. Now pastor is saying, come and lead prayer. Every time you want to lead prayer, people are tired because your TTT is not finishing. This means what, what is happening when your tongue is not moving, your language of the spirit is not changing, you are lacking inspiration. Christianity is inspiration. Life is inspiration. If you want to move from one place to another, there must be an inspiration. Where do you get that inspiration? In the infilling of the Holy Ghost. When you have fellowship with the Holy Ghost, you speak in psalms, you speak in hymns, you sing songs in the spirit. Don't ever say to yourself, nah, I don't even know how to sing. Just the Spirit of God doesn't want your tune. It doesn't want that you know soprano or altar. Close yourself in the house. Even if you cannot sing. The Lord is my shepherd. When you're doing that, what is happening? You're getting the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit infills you, you begin to overflow. And the first place to see there's an infilling is here. 
tongues. They change. Even the car you are driving. Did you arrive here by gear one only? And you see you arrive in Albert and from Pretoria on gear one, no changing. Uh, please change gears in the spirit. How? Uh, please change. You know, you know, you start your prayer. You, you, are, you are low. Now your car is changing gear. The time you come out, boldness. You know, and you know. That I am more than a conqueror. Amen. Praise God. Thank God we are praying differently. So, in verse 42, as we were reading the same chapter, Elijah was dealing with the disaster now. And he dealt with it through prayer. Go to 1 Kings 17 verse 1. Then you will see something there. The Bible says, and Elijah, the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel live before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year except at my word. So that drought was declared by Elijah himself. What a boldness. I told you in prayer you develop boldness. Communication gives us boldness. Because Elijah knew he was he's not talking to men, he's talking to God. So this means that when you, after you finish talking to God, you have boldness to speak to anything that is before you. Thou shalt say to this mountain, be thou removed, and the mountain shall move. After prayer, you gain strength in prayer. Prayer gives you strength to face anything. Elijah got strength in prayer to declare a drought. And now he wants to declare abundance of rain. He wants from drought, they have to move into abundance of rain. He knew that it will not happen until I pray. I started with prayer and I will finish with prayer. This June, blankets are not your, your friends. You are going to kick the blankets. You are going to pick birth. In fact, the month of June and July, winter season is a season to invest in prayer. When summer comes, you are seeing the returns of your prayer. Amen. Jehovah. Amen. Elijah declared drought. And he said, this time I want rain to come. And he declared, he announced again, there will be rain. And he went to Mount Carmel and he began to do what he do best. Prayer. Let's go to James 5 because when you only read this, you only think like, ah, Elijah just prayed, uh, God let there be rain and what. But let me, let's see, James explained the situation of Elijah very well. Go to James 5 verse 16. Hey, James 5, verse 16, James, it says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Go to verse 17. If you have Amplified, we're going to read that, that scripture in Amplified. Verse 17. Verse 17. And it says, now it's begin to explain what happened in the book of 1 Kings 18. He says, Elijah, verse 17, Elijah was a man with nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly. How? Earnestly. That 
He prayed earnestly. I was checking the verse 7. Elijah prayed earnestly that it will not rain. He didn't just wake up in the morning and say, there will not be rain here. The Bible, now James is connecting the secret behind his declaration. He said, Elijah prayed earnestly that it will not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And in verse 18, and Elijah prayed again. <laughs> Elijah prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. So all these things that we see around Elijah was pillared or supported by prayer. You think like he was just going to be going anywhere and just say, door, open, open. You must open doors on your knees. Those who want to get married, you are here. You think like your beauty will put you in marriage. But I'm beautiful, nobody even say anything. <laughs> if you want serious godly marriage, you want serious godly marriage that will have an impact that when you get married in the kingdom of darkness, shake. Lay on the floor. On your stomach. Gaze over hand. Speak in tongues. Pray. Pray. Bath your marriage. You will be so beautiful, they will not see you. Because, yeah, yeah, in the world, before you got born again, you were proposed corner to corner. Everyone was, shh, 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 shh. But when you got born again, since 1999, nobody is. <laughs> and yeah, you're losing weight, you're doing It's not weight that bring marriage. It's not six pack that bring marriage. Yeah. It's prayer. Yeah. Come on, come on, somebody, come on. You know, God, accelerate me. Accelerate me. Even marriage, accelerate my day. Accelerate somebody to be, you know, just bring somebody by axel, by force of acceleration. <laughs> And those that are married, you think like your marriage. The Bible says he prayed that it will not rain. You pray a prayer of marriage, you got married. He prayed again that it will rain. You are in marriage, don't relax. There are many passengers. <laughs> you, uh, what do you think your own your own will not be a candidate of those those that are wait they are laying in wait they are just do you know that there are women they are just waiting whether a man is married they don't care they are just married waiting for they will even go to shrines to bind that woman to bind that man you you thinking ah, this man Ujola, is joining too much this woman is joining too much no it's prayer Pray for your marriage. Pray for your marriage. Don't sleep and say, Wangandi, Wangandi, not the aya. Ne wanga, ne wanga. Oto nanga is refuna. He chose me. He chose me. Of all the dresses, he chose me. He, cho eh, he chose you, but sustain it in prayer. Even if your husband speak in tongues and angels come when he's speaking in tongues, he still need a wife's prayer. Amen. Be a watchman over your house. I'm surprised by women who sleep. <laughs> you are at peace. 
You sleep from eight. You see, me, I sleep six hours. According to the clock of what, what, they say we must rest our body for six hours. When after six hours, I must go to work and my mind is fresh. Hey, hey, hey go. When your whole family go to sleep, wake up. Your husband is sleeping, your children are sleeping. Wake up. Mariga baske, zondia baske, maragia boska, ragabonda. You go to the room for your children, they are snoring. Riga seleba, sikalabayade. You are a seed of Abraham, you are blessed. You are not going to go in the nations of the, you are going to the nations of the world. You are a prophet. You prophesy when they are sleeping. What did God do to Abraham? God put Abraham in deep sleep so that he can speak over his life. When your children and your husband are in deep sleep, it's time to speak to their destiny. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So Elijah prayed earnestly. When you read it, it amplified, it says, a continued, heartfelt prayer of righteous men made tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. There is no prayer without manifestation of power. Amen. Though I'm not talking about prayer, but we're going to close very soon. Don't pray. Pray until power manifests. Yeah. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. When power manifests, it's it's so dynamic. That it causes tremendous changes around your life. The problem is because of technology, because of the world has so evolved so much, we don't spend time in prayer anymore. We are always in rush. There's a day where you have to lock yourself to pray until power manifests. When power manifests, is dynamic in its working. What you need now is to pray until power man. When not power manifesting in church, power manifesting in your room alone. Because here, when we are in church, power can manifest very nice. Isn't it that, especially there's cameras here? in church are many. Your tongues are so fire in church. You are the loudest. When you go home. Don't you think you're an actress? Don't you think you're an actress? Because the real thing is when you make power, your pastor is not there, camera is not there, nobody's there. It's you and the Holy Ghost. You are praying until power manifests. Nobody sees you. That is what I call prayer. I want to ask you, those who are prayer warrior in front of others, in home, how is your prayer? You are sleeping too much. I'm talking to you. In the eyes of people, you behave like you pray more than anyone. But when you are alone, sleep is your friend. The spirit of slumbering is too much on you. Don't you ever think, don't think that you'll make anything. That, because that one is called corporate prayer. There is the one that is called your prayer where you are making significant, tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Then that is the one that will change your life. Even Jesus had to withdraw early in the morning to pray. You want to break the walls. You want to show when Pastor Fumulan is here, he says, Oh, I have prayer warriors. Yeah. Yo, look at how my people are praying. Pastor is very happy that my people are praying. Pastor, go and look at them in the night there. They will leave you praying alone. They are sleeping. Say, us, we are not pastors of church. 
She will do it. He will do it himself. He's the one who's called to us. We must sleep. Hey. And you think he will chase these people? There are many actresses in the eyes of pastors. Pastor is thinking I have majority of people that are praying. Ah, I've taught these people prayer, eh? My people pray. Go to the house. Allow the Holy Spirit to see vision on how your leaders are sleeping. Hey! Your way. Leaders, they sleep. I'm telling you the honest truth. When they come in front of you, they say, we are with you, woman of God. You are with you. Wherever you go, kai, kai, kapa, kai, rinali, we, na. I need you in the spirit more than physical. Carry this burden with me. Carry this burden for winning souls with me. Carry this burden of Jesus with me in the spirit. You don't even have to tell me that you are praying. Pray because it's your responsibility to do it. Hey. Stop this thing for being actress. And women love it too much. There's no people that are hypocrites like women. I love men. Whatever you see, you get. Women are mystery. That still need to be. I think women are still to be learned in heaven. What nature of creature is this? I'm a woman. At least I'm speaking I'm a woman. Because you, we still... <laughs> I know many, many of you men who are married here, you're still learning your wife. Since you married now, it's 20 years. She's... You, you, you know how Jesus is, isn't it? When the angels have seen the glory, they see another glory. When they see the glory, they see another. If they think they see another, that's a, a woman. If you think you saw this, she's coming with something else. And you're thinking, oh, maybe at, at, least, at least I know my, my, my wife. I know my wife. You don't know her. Tomorrow she'll be coming with something, another glory. <laughs> I'm a woman, I'm telling you. Men, you are here. Don't even come to a place where you say, I know my woman. You don't know woman. Maybe Christ will explain who a woman is when we meet him. Praise the Lord. Because woman is always accelerated in everything. I've led women. I'm a pastor. I've led women. They have forever accelerated in many. They are wearing coat of many colors. These colors are not enough. And yet a very gifted creature that when she's harnessed, she'll bring you results you know nothing about. I'm telling you the power of a woman. When a woman is harnessed and she's trained, they are first class, first class soldiers in the body of Christ. They're the ones who carry the ministry of Jesus to fruition. So churches need to take care of women. But we just want to tell you that there's another side. So just relax. Train them. They will come okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go back to First Kings 1843. I don't, know, I don't make people to laugh like this. Pastor Mura, what's happening on this altar? Yo. First Kings 18, verse 43. Then we're going to conclude. My, my, my team that I came with, he said, Pastor, prophetess, they might be saying, prophetess, you have started that thing again. You are concluding ever since. And all the pastors, we are all like that. It's the same spirit. We are forever concluding. It's no more. Yes, First Kings 18, 43. The Bible says, and said, okay, let me read it. And he put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, 
Go up now. Look towards the sea. So he went up and looked and said there is nothing. Remember, he said, I see the abundance of rain. There was nothing. But in the spirit, there was something. Now, what Elijah is working on is to bring the spirit into the manifestation. He's manipulating all the elements of the earth so that rain can come. And the place of manipulation is a place of prayer. The endless continued heartfelt. Verse 44. Verse 43, and said to his servant, go up, 44, then it came to pass. The seventh time that he said, there is a cloud, as small as a man's hand, rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariots, and go down before the rain stops you. It was small, but Elijah saw abundance of rain. It might look small, but it's big. I say, whatever you have, it might look small, but it is big. Whatever you have, it might look small, but before God, it's not small. My God. And in verse 44, and now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. And in verse 46, he said, then the hand of the Lord, this is where I am in conclusion. I want to introduce my message now I was not talking about prayer but I want to show you that all these things came about prayer in verse 46 says then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he gathered up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel so my message tonight is the hand of God come on somebody chanda chamzimu the hand of God. The hand of God came upon Elijah. And when that hand came upon Elijah, he overtook the chariots. He overtook the chariots of Ab. And I believe because there were chariots of a king, they were the fastest chariots in that time. But the Bible says the hand of God came upon Elijah. When the hand of God came upon Elijah, he gathered his loins and he ran ahead of Ahab chariot. Tonight the hand of God is upon you. You're gonna go and you're gonna run ahead. I'm here to announce to you that it's a season of overtaking. I say it's a season of overtaking. I say it's a season of overtaking. I say it's a season of overtaking. The spirit of God is accelerating you. I said the hand of God is coming upon you. It's your season of accelerating. I said it's your season of acceleration. I said somebody it's your season of acceleration. The hand of God came upon the later. I said the hand of God came upon the later. The Bible said he began to run. He was not running no man. He was a supernatural man. Because the hand of God came upon him.
Spirit of the Lord came upon Elijah and caused him to move in the supernatural. The church was hundred. And the hand of the Lord came upon the church. From hundred to two thousand. From two thousand to hundred thousand. Because when God comes, when God manifests, there's acceleration. You are just nobody. And people are laughing at you. They are saying you are not going to end anyway. Your last job during COVID-19. Your last client job during COVID-19. You lost everything. I'm here to tell you. The hand of God is manifesting in your life. I said the hand of God is manifesting in your life. All that you have lost are coming back ten times more than ever before. Come and shout. Uh, uh, I am overtaking. Uh, and I'm not apologizing about that. I say you are overtaking. And there's no apology about that. I say the grace of God is available for you. And there's no apology about that. My God. The hand of the Lord. We know what acceleration means. To accelerate, make, it means to move more quickly. If your car was moving in 80, when it's accelerated, you put it in 120, it means the speed changes. The Spirit of God says, by the reason of this meeting, from 80, you are accelerated. Your car is about to move faster. I say your business is about to move faster. I say your finances is about to move faster. Everything about your life is about to move faster. If you believe me, shout yes, I believe it. everything slow slow how is everything moving it's moving but it's too slow I am here as a prophet of God please fix me this the microphone my voice will go I'm here as a prophet of God I'm here to prophesy over your life that the season of slow 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 hmm. I said the season of slow 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 it's gone. I say it's gone. I say the season of slow, slow, slow is gone. It is your season of acceleration. I say it's your season of acceleration. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody shout yes. And remember the hand of the Lord. It's not man who's causing it. It's God causing it. I am moving. I'm moving quicker. I am no more slow, 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 slow. I'm moving quicker and quicker and quicker. You know when you open your eyes. Within these few months. How many months are remain for the 2023? 
within the six months, the, the six months that is coming, the last term of 2023, it will be like, my God, what happened within the six months? Acceleration happened. What happened within the six months? I began to, uh, on the 24th of June, I attended Divine Acceleration Conference. And after the acceleration, all I can see is the hand of God. The hand of God. The hand of God. The hand of God. Everything has been accelerated. I say everything has been accelerated. I say everything has been accelerated. I say everything is moving quick. I say everything is moving quick. In the mighty name of you and you and you and you. Acceleration. I'm moving faster. I'm moving quick. To accelerate makes it it means to make something to happen fast. Something to happen faster. It is happening quick. It's happening faster. Please be seated. This fastestness will shake you. And this fastestness will shake your enemies. This fast. God is about to do what has never happened in your background through you. We have never had a man running and overtaking Lamborghini. We have never had a man running and overtaking Bugatti. These are the fastest car in our generation. And I believe the chariots of Ahab were Bugattis. The chariots of Ahab were Ferraris. That no man in the speed and normal human energy can overtake Bugatti. But when the hand of God came upon him, I say, when the hand of God came upon him, do you know what happened? Let me tell you, what happened is, when the hand of God came upon him, he was transported. What is the Spirit of God saying? Here is Philip. He's baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch. He baptized. He preached the gospel. He received Christ. They looked for water. And he finished baptizing. And when he finished baptizing, when the Ethiopian eunuch opened his eyes, Philip was noble. And Philip found himself in Asotos. How did I arrive here? No aeroplane took me here. No Lamborghini took me here. The Spirit of God transported me here. What am I trying to say right now? No man will transport you to the next level. The Spirit of God is transporting you to the next level. You don't need your 25 years of qualification. You don't need 30 years experience. What you need is the hand of God. I say what you need is the hand of God. I say what you need is the hand of God. The hand of God, the Spirit of God will transport you. You know what? Let me just network with somebody. Please connect me. You don't need connection. When God, the hand of God comes upon you, He connects you everywhere. I say He connects you everywhere. I see there's a divine networking in this place. I say, I see there's a divine networking in this place. When you are accelerated, you are unstoppable. That woman prayed. I said, God, when you visit a woman or a man, they sit with princesses and kings. You do not even qualify. Please fix me this microphone. You do not even qualify to sit with them. But the hand of God. That's what the Spirit of God is doing in your life right here, right now. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. 
the hand of the Lord, if you're asking yourself, signifies the power of God. When we talk about God's hand, it's not physical hand. It's the power of God. It's the manifestation of the power of God. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Can you give me the strings as you're playing there? Speak in tongues. Can I hear you speaking in tongues? Sadi baba baye. Zega da baragadoske. Libra de gabaska barabashanta la baye. Zeku brahida basunde di bahashki. Hira baske bahashto lo bradika boshka. Libaske paradecto li gabashka. Mira desko barabadi gabonde. Libonza di cabronda li bahaya. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. So. When the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, the Bible was saying the power of God came upon Elijah. When the power manifested, Elijah began to do what no man can do. Thou shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When the power manifests, I say when the power manifests. I say when the power manifests. What is power? The ability to cause changes. What is power? The ability to work miracles. When the power manifests. Just like Elijah. Something unusual happened. The power of God. Is manifesting in your life this season. Something unusual is about to happen. Something supernatural is about to happen. God is God of power. If you remove power from God, He remains in stop to be God. There is power of God in this place. The power of God is manifesting over your life. The power of God is manifesting over your career. The power of God is manifesting over your family. The power of God is manifesting over your business. When the power of God manifests something unusual, something abnormal is happening. When the power manifests, you move from normality to abnormality. I see somebody moving from normal to abnormality by the reason of the power, 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 the
Ezekiel said in Ezekiel 37 verse 1 it said the hand of the Lord came upon me and he transported me to the valley to the valley of dry bones and he said son of man can these bones live give me, give me Ezekiel 37 verse 1 something is about to happen in this place not about to happen this is a wrong word something is happening in this place I said something is happening in this place something is happening break it break it break it Ezekiel said the hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out into the spirit of the Lord and sent me down in the midst of the valley and it was Prophesy somebody. Le braga bonda prophesy. Le ke de bakoli da bashanda. Le krebe de le broko boshkali brada bashka. Le braga boshkali bradi kabashanda. 
Le prekete le gebos kali brada ya. Eke de bradi kabos eke de ba. Le ke de ba kuda basari da de. Le kabre de kida bahaya. Le ke de bos eke de ba ya de. Le kabaya de kida ba costa liga diga. Maria se ke de bos. Le kabados kali bronde. Le kwe prophesy acceleration. Le ke de bos eke de basha. Me ke de bos. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Shh. Lift up your hands. Say, I declare acceleration in all areas of my life. In the name of Jesus. Say, I declare acceleration in all areas of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, I declare acceleration in all areas of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, say, I declare acceleration in all areas of my life. In the name of Jesus, say, I declare acceleration in all areas of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare acceleration in all areas of my life. In the name of Jesus, one more time, I declare acceleration in all areas of my life. In the name of Jesus. Acceleration. He can't approach the kilaba. Marike celebre kede. Para kadi ke bada ba. Le kede bari kaba ba. He kede bari kaba ya. Le kede bari kaba sade. Me kede basa kadi ka. Ziga di kaba dak prayer. Te kede ba kos kadi ka. Le kede brodi kaba. Brodi kaba kadi kadi ka. Piki da 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 di kide de kede de di kide da. Te kede di kide da da di kide da 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 da. He kede kide da da di kide da da da. Te kede de kide da kala di kide da da. He kede kide da kide da di kide da da. Te kede di kide da kala kadi ka. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father, for our divine acceleration. We thank you, God, that everything in life is accelerated divinely in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and lift up your hands and say this. Anything blocking me in the spirit to move forward, I remove in the name of Jesus. Say anything blocking me in the realm of the spirit to move forward. I remove you in the name of Jesus. Say anything that has been blocking me in the realm of the spirit to move forward. I remove you in the name of Jesus. Say anything that has been blocking me in the realm of the spirit to move forward. I remove you in the name of Jesus. Anything that has been blocking me in the realm of the spirit to move forward. I remove you in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that has been blocking me to move forward in the realm of the 
the spirit. I remove you in the name of Jesus. Remove Pariaba, Sibiniba, Sogodi Gida Bada Kalida, Mega de Brown de Kidaba, Jeke de Prate Kila Prate, Paragadi Gisande, Reke Paska, Radike de Boska, Reke Tekete, Reke Tekete, Sheketia Tata, Rakata, Reke Te Parate, Rakadia, Sadika Pariata, Reke Diata, Reke Teke, Reke Teke, Picata Tata, Teke de Te, Seke Teke, Reke Dia, Seke Dia Basa, Hedias, 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 Esa, Maria Boseke. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ten people here. Things have turned around. I said ten people here. There's so much speed that you have gained. I came with the number ten. I hear number ten. Ten things are happening in your life. I hear ten. I see ten. Ten things significant has happened in the ministry. Ten things significant not that they are going to happen. They have happened. And they're going to manifest in the physical. Ten things significant is happening in your life, members of the church. Ten things significant has happened. Ten people. There's a divine change. There's a divine change. There's a divine acceleration. In your life. I want to pray. For people. That are birthdaying on the 10th of July. Come here. If you are here. Your birthday is on the 10th of July. I want to pray for you. Those that are born 10th July. Come here. 10. I hear 10. The angel of God who is working here. Is working with number 10. 10 things. Significant. If you are born in July the 10th. Come here. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands towards heaven. Ten. Ten. Ministry. Ten times more. Finances. Ten times more. Your promotion. Ten times more. Everything. Ten times more. Restoration. Ten times more. Everything. Thank God for ten times. Thank God for number ten. Thank God for number ten. Thank God for number 10. Thank God for 10. Zako barabasa. Zeke de bakosi da baha. Zadike bondari kabasande de boska. Mede bosande bede baha. 10 days from here. I'm talking about 10, 10, 10. 10 days from today. You will see something significant happening in your life. You know where we are right now? You are like a goalkeeper. You are waiting for the ball because the power of God is here. So if the word is concerning you, grab lamba, not the word. Grab the word. I say 10 days from here, this altar will be full with testimonies, testimonies. 10 days from here, you will know you came to this meeting. 10 days from here, you will have a significant testimony, somebody. If you believe me, say yes. If you believe me, say yes. If you believe it, say yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs>